Come away with me and hike the Wemenuchi Wilderness in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. We'll backpack for three days along the Colorado Continental Divide and Highland Mary Lakes trails. If you are interested in doing this route, check the show notes below for a link to the GPS tracks we recorded during the hike. The San Juan Mountains are located in southwest Colorado, a day's drive from Tucson, Arizona. To prepare for the elevation involved in this trek, we did two days of acclimation hikes along Cascade Creek to the Falls and the Crater Lake Trail. We began the hike at the Colorado Trail trailhead just west of Molas Lake. We elected to hike north and west so we could begin with a descent instead of ending with an ascent. The Colorado Trail down to the Animas River crossing is quite steep but nicely switchbacked. At the lowest elevation of the hike at the Animus River, we said goodbye to the base campers that would come and pick us up three days later. Our six backpackers from the Tucson meetup group began the journey clean scrubbed and well rested. We passed dozens of great campsites along this section. Day one was an eight-mile hike to the Beaver Dam, about halfway up the Elk Creek drainage. We descended about 1,700 feet that day, and ascended about 1,200 feet. Our campsites at the Beaver Pond were incredibly scenic with great reflections of the mountains in the still waters. We enjoyed the peaceful sound of the water running over the dam all night long, but we were less fond of the pesky flies that plague this site. Day two was a climbing day, six and a half miles with only 300 feet of descent, but 2,660 feet of up. The climbing was relentless, and the lower parts of this section are not switchbacked and can be pretty steep. See my video on getting fit for your first Grand Canyon hike for a good starting point of a workout to get ready for this trail. A don't miss spot along this section is the waterfall, where Elk Creek joins the drainage. This might be easy to miss if hiking westbound, but eastbound it was pretty obvious. We spotted some wildlife along this section in the wooded areas. Just before you hit the switchbacks up to the divide, there are some mines you can explore with a little off-trail bushwhacking. When we hit the switchbacks, the explosion of wildflowers was just over the top. Their gentle grade was a nice change of pace from the earlier steep sections. The views down trail were spectacular, of course. They are reputed to be some of the best along the whole 500-mile Colorado Trail. How does it feel, Noreen? Oh, I've never felt my glutes this sore. Oh. <laughs> With all the climbing, you'll appreciate the hours you spent on the Stairmaster training for the hike. Make sure you take advantage of the meadows here and take some photos of your companions. When you get to the top, you will jump for joy, both for the views and knowing it's mostly downhill from here. A group photo at the Colorado Continental Divide Trail Junction is a must-do. This is a saddle point with 360-degree views. Truly incredible. From there, it was a short hike north along the Continental Divide Trail to our campsite at some ponds. These sites are above tree lines, so I couldn't bring my hammock to sleep in. Unfortunately, that resulted in a rookie mistake because I forgot my tent poles, so I had to MacGyver a bivy support with three lash trekking poles. Dinner that night with friends was a special time with the wide open views. Day three was a 6.6 mile hike mostly down the Highland Mary Lakes Trail with 2,100 feet of descent. We took the route marked in red on this map so we could hike through the lakes with the intention of meeting our companions for a lakeside lunch. Hiking down from the CDT Trail Junction was really special. We felt like the fellowship of the ring with the open views. The wildflowers along this section were profuse. But with the higher elevations and colder temperatures, it looked like they hadn't quite peaked yet. Note the trail post in the distance. The trail gets a little indistinct for a while, so keep your eyes peeled for the posts. The views along the Elk Creek headwaters were jaw-dropping. After a few miles, the lakes began to come into view. This looked like it would be a great spot to camp. We awaited our companions at the main lake. One brave soul attempted a swim, but that water was pretty chilly. 
The trail below the lakes goes past some picturesque waterfalls. Finally, we made it to the trailhead. It was a welcome sight. We had the nicest surprise ever when we arrived at our vehicles. Ice cold beer for all. The Tucson backpacking meetup group is a great group. At the end of the trail, our half dozen hikers were tired and didn't smell too good, but we were happy campers. If you park at the trailhead itself, I recommend a four-wheel drive vehicle due to the stream crossing. There's parking before the stream, but of course then you have to wait across on foot. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please click like and subscribe below.